Hello everyone, this is Jeff Lanningham here with First Baptist Church Rockport and I know many of you are part of our church. Some of you may be tuning in and uh, maybe you're on my feed or maybe you got hold of this somehow but you're just tuning in today and maybe you just need a, a word of encouragement and so we just want to come to you now as First Baptist Church here in Rockport and we just want to encourage you uh, to continue on doing the good work that you're doing and staying strong through this difficult time. Uh, I know some of y'all may be, we, we've been doing this for a little while now, a couple of weeks almost, and uh, it may be getting a little hard. I understand that uh, some of y'all have young children and the young children at home without any place to go uh, gets to be a little bit old. I know that uh, we've got some seniors that are supposed to be graduating and, and beginning to struggle a little bit with how to manage all the things that they have coming up. I know that there's schoolwork going on. And we're struggling with that at my house and trying to figure all that out. Uh, in fact, I understand tomorrow I get to be in a video for my son. And uh, I can tell you I'm really, really looking forward to that. But there's a lot of things that we could do to stress out about all of this. But the best thing that we can do is just know that everybody's doing the best that they can and that we continue to trust in the people that are telling us what's going on and that we continue to comply with what they're asking and we continue just to stay home and, and, and ride this storm, and, uh, and we'll be able to get through all of this. Uh, please know that your church staff is praying for you. Please know, please know that we love you, and please know that if you need anything, you can contact us, and we're happy to help you in any way that we can. Before we get started with our devotion today, uh, I want to share just a couple of announcements with you. Uh, first of all, this coming Sunday is Palm Sunday, and we're asking you to do two things for this Sunday, and one of them definitely will work, and one of them we're hopeful will, will work. Uh, one thing we'd like for you to do is to get a picture of your family with some palm leaves, and if you would take a picture of your family with palm leaves and email that picture to connect at fbcrockport.net, we are hopeful that this Sunday we'll be able to put together a slideshow of all the different people in our church with palm leaves and, and make that in some way uh, a part of our service or maybe a slideshow before the service or a, a, an add-on to our uh, Facebook page. But we want a chance for you all to get to see each other and get a chance to connect visually with the other families in our church. And so if you would take a picture of your you and your family with palm palm branches and palm leaves, Send it to connect at fbcrockport.net. Uh, and if you could do that by this Saturday, we're going to try to make that happen. The other thing that you could do is you could take those same palm leaves and display those on your front door. And that can be an example to all of those around you of what this Sunday is and what your faith is and what that means to you. Uh, maybe even perhaps your, your neighbors will ask you what you're doing and why you're doing that. And you might have an opportunity to have a spiritual conversation with some of your neighbors. Uh, you may be have a, able to have a chance to give them uh, to explain the hope that you have in Jesus Christ. Also, next Friday, not tomorrow, but next Friday is Good Friday. And the church is going to have a Good Friday service live streaming at 6 p.m. We're going to have worship in the Lord's Supper. And before then, you're going to need to gather some bread and some grape juice. And Pastor Scott will help your family to celebrate the Lord's Supper right there in your home. I hope that you will make it a point to join us a week from tomorrow as we are able to come together virtually and celebrate the Lord's Supper and celebrate together as the body of Christ. I believe it's going to be a meaningful time, and I hope you'll be there to be a part of that. And then on April the 12th, that's Easter Sunday. Yesterday, Marcy suggested that everyone should take an Easter picture and send it to the church. Once again, connect at fbcrockport.net. Uh, we're hoping to be able to use those photos to do an online slideshow, either in or before the Easter service that Sunday. Uh, I know Marcy suggested that we would use them when we all get back together, but we'd like to have something Easter Sunday morning where we can all see each other and we can all uh, recognize each other and, and rejoice in that. And so if you would have some time to take a photo and then to get that email to us by next Thursday, that would be great. If you missed any of the... Uh, contact information on that. Uh, you can just watch this video again and you can get it at the end and that would be great. Uh, on Monday when you and I were together, we looked at some verses in Philippians 1 
And today I want to look at Philippians 2. And I'm going to read a chunk of Philippians 2 because Paul's words are so rich and he crams so much together and there's so much good stuff in here that there's some things that I found that I'll point out at the end. But there may be something else that speaks to you today. There may be something in God's word that speaks to you that didn't speak to me the same way. And you needed to hear that today. And so I'm going to read a big passage of Philippians 2. And then I'm going to point out a few things, and then we're going to close. And I want to close with uh, the Jude doxology today. Um, so Philippians 2, if you've got your Bibles, maybe you've had a chance to turn there. We're starting in verse 1 and just reading down a little over halfway. But starting in verse 1, he says, Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete. By being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but rather in humility. Lost my place. But rather in humility, value others above yourselves. Not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. Being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. And then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and I rejoice with all of you. So you too shall be glad and rejoice with me. Just a couple of things here few quick takeaways from this passage that mean a lot to me today as I was reading this. First of all, if you are encouraged from your relationship with Jesus, then be like him. Jesus was focused. He knew what his mission was. He knew what he was called here to do. We too need to be focused. And I will tell you that we may not understand all that's going on around us. We may not know how God is using all of this and how God is working through all of this, but we can be focused on him. And so if we'll focus on him, then he'll be able to use us the way he wants to. So we need to be focused. We also need to be humble. We need to be recognizing that God is in control, that God is above us, and that God is in charge of everything that's going on, and that it's not up to us. And so in humility, I want to step back, and I want to allow God to take charge and to be in control in my life. And then finally, he talked about being loving. What we need right now is Christians that are showing the love of Christ in our world. And we want to demonstrate that love to those around us. We want to demonstrate that love to our neighbors. We want to demonstrate that love to our children and our brothers and sisters and our spouses. We want to demonstrate that love to everyone that we're able to come in contact with over the next month. We want to be loving. The second thing I noticed was he talked about humility. And he said that humility makes us usable by God. When Jesus humbled himself, God was able to use him and exalt him to the highest place. God cannot use us and exalt us if we're not humble in spirit. We need to have humility, and we need to know who's in charge and who's really running this whole show. And then finally, whatever the circumstance, we should rejoice. Paul's talking about joy. Now, sometimes people feel like, well, things are really bad around, and I, I can't have joy in all of this. This is a real struggle. But, you know, joy and happiness are not the same thing. A lot of people desire happiness. They want to have that happiness in their life. But you can't be happy and sad at the same time. 
They just don't go together. But you can be sad and joyful. You can have a rough time in life and everything be going wrong and struggling and you'll be having a really difficult time, but yet at the same time you can have the contentment and the joy of the Lord in your life. And I think that's what Paul's talking about. Not happiness, not smiles, but a contentment. Are you content today? God wants to, you to have that kind of contentment in your life. And joy is a contentment. With Christ, we can be content in any circumstance, in any situation, even if one is not the way we want it to be. Joy comes from Him, and it is not circumstantial. Today, I want to close with the Jude doxology. Last time I read a psalm, and I love psalms, but uh, growing up, my pastor always closed the services that we had with the Jude doxology. And I find great hope and great joy and great comfort in these words. So today, let's close with this. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. I wish you peace, my friends. I wish you joy. And I pray that God would be with you in these coming days. Thank you.